So in this question, we've already done part A, and we've said that this is equivalent to this that we've got. And now we're going to actually start going on with the main part of this question that's offering us something a bit different to what we've just seen. So it now says that m of theta is 40 plus 3 sine theta minus 6 cos theta all squared. And it wants us to find the maximum value of m theta and then the smallest value of theta at which that maximum value of m theta occurs. So how does this relate to the question? It increases by a factor of 3. It's the same, but it has been multiplied by 3. So I'm going to rewrite m theta as 40 plus this thing, but tripled. So it's going to be 3 root 5 sine theta minus 1.107 all squared. That's the first step there of recognizing that this yellow bit that we've highlighted, we can adapt into this thing that we've got here. And then we want this to be as big as it can possibly be. So if I want this to be as big as possible, what do you think we need this thing in the brackets to be? We need it to be equal to 1. Could it be equal to anything else? OK, so it could be equal to 1 or minus 1. Why could it be equal to minus 1 as well? Yeah, because you're squaring it. So it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative in this case. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. So this thing here, the sine thing, can either be 1 or minus 1. That's going to be important in a second. But we want to find out the maximum value. So the maximum value is just going to be 40 plus 3 root 5 squared, because we've said this is either 1 or minus 1. And 3 root 5 squared is 45. So it's 40 plus 45, which is 85. Now, I'm going to ask you a different question before we have a look at this part two, OK? If I wanted to find, instead, the minimum value, how do you think I'd find out what the minimum value is? OK, let's try putting in the negative. I would have 40 plus minus 3 root 5 squared, which is? 85. So does that make sense that the maximum value and the minimum value are the same? Pardon? Good. Instead, if you were trying to find the minimum value, you wouldn't make this thing be minus 1. Instead, you would make it be 0 because you're squaring it. And when you're squaring it, the smallest thing that it can be is 0. So if you were looking for the minimum value, you would make the sine of theta minus 1.107, you would make it equal 0 if you were looking for a minimum value. That didn't happen in the previous questions. Why has it happened in this question but not the previous ones? Because it's being squared. So if you're ever asked to think about something with a minimum when it's been squared, 0 is going to become the, the friend that you need. OK? Right, we're now going to actually finish the question, which was in blue here. So we want to find the smallest value of theta at which this maximum value of theta occurs. Well, we just said that the maximum value is when sine of theta minus 1.107 is equal to 1 or minus 1. We said it could be either of them because you're squaring it. So if it was equal to 1, we're going to do it with both of them and see what it would be we would say that theta minus 1.107, what angle of sine gives you 1? Pi over 2. And so theta would be pi over 2 plus 1.107, which is 2.678. Or we could have said that sine theta minus 1.1 O seven was minus 1. When is it going to be equal to minus 1? At 3 pi over 2 or 
minus pi over t. Do you get why it could also be at minus pi over t? Minus because if you think about the sine graph, there's a minimum point at 3 pi over 2. But if you want to go back 2 pi, you can also get to that one as well. Why do you think I've gone back to minus pi over 2 here? It's a smaller value, and I'm going to be adding on to it 1.107. So it's going to become a positive value. So theta will either be this 1 plus 1.107 or this 1.107. So it's either 5.819 or... And actually, neither of them, it is still negative. So that one is outside the range. That one is bigger than that one. So I was just being really, really thorough there in checking that I'd actually got the smallest value of theta. Because it wants us to say the smallest value of theta in this range. We had a choice of this one, this one, or this one. That one is not in the range. And so the answer is 2.678. The reason I wanted to show you that in a bit more detail is because the smallest value of theta could have come from this sneaky thing of it being minus 1. They were a bit kind in this question, and it wasn't like that. OK. Next one that we've got, it's kind of like a different part of the question here. We've now got 30 over 5 plus 2 sine 2 theta minus 2 cos 2 theta squared. And we want this to be the maximum value. Now. First of all, I'm going to rewrite this so that you have that n theta is 30 over 5 plus 2. And then in brackets, I'm going to replace that with this, root 5 of sine. What do I need to change the theta to, though? 2 theta. 2 theta. The question is in terms of 2 theta, but it was originally written in terms of theta. And I want this thing to be a maximum. When does a fraction become a maximum? Ma a maximum? What can you say about the denominator? Smallest. As small as possible. So I want this denominator to be as small as possible. How do I make that denominator as small as possible? Make it equal to 1? No. Zero. Make it equal to 0. Oh, Why? Because of the squaring. So in this particular case, we want We want sine of 2 theta minus 1.107 to be equal to 0. And just let's think through the steps of that one more time. If this is equal to 0, you get 0 squared, which is the smallest thing that it can be. And that gives you the denominator as small as possible, which gives you the maximum thing overall. This is not easy. Okay, This is not easy. This requires a lot of thinking about what's happening. You can't just follow a pattern. So. The maximum value of n theta is going to be what? Six. Six. The maximum value is going to be 30 over 5 plus 2 times 0 squared, which is just 30 over 5, which is 6. And this will occur, it now wants the largest value of theta in that range for it to occur. So we want sine 2 theta minus 1.107 to be equal to 0. And we need to think of the times when sine theta is equal to 0. Either 0, pi, 2 pi. It could even be minus pi. But actually, if I, have, if I add that to minus pi, it's never going to become positive. So we want the largest one. But remember, it still needs to be inside the range of between 0 and 2 pi. So um, it might, may even need to go higher than this. i tell you what we could have done is we could have changed the range. The range is between 0 and 2 pi. So I'm going to double it like this. 
and then I can subtract 1.107 as well. So I'm just going to type in my calculator 4 pi minus 1.107 so I know when to stop. So this is 11.46. That's going to be my upper limit. So I may need to do a few more. So I'm going to solve this equation by adding 1.107 to them and then dividing it by 2. Well, I'm going to try the biggest one that I've got to begin with. So I'll do 4 pi plus 1.107. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that one, you're right, that one is not going to be inside the range. So that's, that's silly to even include the 4 pi. Thank you, Sam. So there's no point using the 4 pi one because that one's outside the range. So the largest one is going to come from the 3 pi. So I'm going to say that 2 theta minus 1.107 is equal to 3 pi. So I'm going to add 1.107. and I'm going to divide it by 2. And I get the answer, 5.266 to three decimal places. This is an exam question from the current specification. This is the level of like challenge that there are in these questions. This is a lot harder than the things we've been looking at prior to here. Okay. So let's just quickly remind ourselves of what we did for this question overall. The first part, which was the easy part, you did it yourself of just doing the harmonic identity. You should all be able to get those marks. The second part was we tried to find the maximum value of r. It occurred when this thing was 1 or minus 1, which gave us 85. And that occurred, I tried it out with all of these different ones. It actually occurred at 2.678. The second one had a bit more to do. It had changed so that it was no longer theta, but it was 2 theta, so I rewrote it like this. And we wanted it to be as small as possible on the denominator, which meant that the trig part had to be equal to 0 because it was being squared. We then found out the maximum value by subbing in 0, and then we solved the equation with it being equal to 0, this time looking for the largest value. It would be very easy to miss off that word largest. So the final answer was 5.266. You have got a question that's on the next page, which is very similar to that one, apart from it's only asking you about the maximum value and the minimum value. We've got not got anything to do with like a fractional kind of one. So you're going to spend the next, what is it, three, six, nine, ten, twelve 10, 12 minutes on this question. I'm going to put the mark scheme up so that if you're ever looking back at this, you can see what the mark scheme is, but I won't leave it on the board for you guys as well. So there's the question. And there's the mark scheme. Okay. 